DuPont Innovation lowers LCOE by increasing cell efficiencies and system lifetime while reducing total system cost. Materials matter. That is, for me, the show of industry. Hello and welcome to the PV Tech Newscast. The headlines this week. The Pentagon awards $7 billion worth of solar contracts. Hemlock, OCI and Sun Edison suffer polysilicon problems. And GTM Research say it will be improving technology, not falling material costs, which will bring the price of Chinese modules down in the next few years. But first, Chinese PV manufacturers are now the leading module suppliers in seven of the world's top ten PV regions, shipment figures for the past year reveal. NPD SolarBuzz's Module Tracker Quarterly reveals that only two companies are giving the Chinese a run for their money, with First Solar dominating in the United States and India, and Sharp leading the rankings in Japan. Otherwise, the top manufacturers in all other seven regions are the big Chinese names, Yingli, Trina, Canadian Solar and SunTech, despite its well-publicized financial problems. Within China itself, which as we reported last week is set to be the world's largest market for 2013, Chinese manufacturers have an almost universal dominance, with Yingli, Jinko Solar and Harian Solar supplying 25% of the modules to the Chinese market. Jinko Solar leads a list of other Tier 1 Chinese manufacturers that SolarBuzz says are gaining market share across the world, among them Rene Solar, JA Solar and Hanwha Solar One. But in the emerging markets of Latin America, the Middle East and Africa, Western and Japanese suppliers provided stronger competition to the Chinese manufacturers, including Konigi, Sharp, REC Solar, SolarWorld and Kyocera. The US Department of Defense has awarded 7 billion US dollars of contracts to 22 companies for the right to develop and sell solar energy to the US Army. Once projects are developed, it is understood winning companies will bid against each other to supply solar power with the remainder of the ring-fenced $7 billion available for purchasing. The projects will be developed on land owned or under the jurisdiction of the DoD. The winning companies include SunPower, Gaelica US, Siemens and Borrego Solar. Staying in the US, the uptake of residential solar PV systems in America has elevated installation rates to one install every four minutes and could rise to one system every 83 seconds by 2016, according to GTM research. Shale Khan, vice president of GTM, said that although the data is taken from the first quarter of this year, the frequency of installations indicates a bullish few years ahead for the residential market. GTM forecasts that there will be 136,000 systems installed in the US this year, 128,000 of which will be residential. This is a dramatic increase from 43,000 system installations in 2010 from 2006, when installers were putting up one system every 80 minutes. The polysilicon sector has been in the limelight this week, but for all the wrong reasons. Hemlock Semiconductor has sued Taiwan-based wafer producer Green Energy Technology over a breach of a polysilicon supply deal as well as Canadian Solar, according to court filings. While Korean producer OCI said it would postpone its $100 million Phase 4 plant expansion plans indefinitely due to ongoing uncertainties in the solar market. The expansion would have increased plant capacity by 10,000 tonnes. And Sun Edison's share price surged after it announced a spin off its semiconductor business, which included its polysilicon and solar wafer production operations. The company was formerly known as MEMC Electronic Materials. It will be improving technology, not the falling cost of materials, which will be the dominant factor in the ongoing drop in costs of Chinese modules, according to a report by GTM Research. GTM claims that Chinese manufacturers will be able to produce modules at a cost of 36 cents per watt by 2017. They have already achieved a 54% decrease in manufacturing costs since 2010. GTM found that the majority of this came from the falling cost of materials caused by an oversupply, with polysilicon responsible for 54% of the total reductions and other materials contributing a further 26%. The report predicts Chinese manufacturers will only be able to cut prices by a single cent in the next year or so, but this could be dwarfed by cuts of 10 cents between 2014 and 2017. 
This is due to a very large drop in labor costs that is expected due to the need to increase the degree of automation employed by Chinese companies to mitigate labor inflation in the country. Future reductions in manufacturing costs will be led by investment in technology and the falling cost of non-polysilicon related materials of 22%. Manufacturing scale will lead to a further 17% cut in prices, but polysilicon will only contribute 1%. And that's all for this week. Be sure to join us next Friday, and in the meantime you can keep up to date with all the very latest PV news via our website and our Twitter feed. Thanks for watching.